guys, Terry. Welcome to D-Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add standby muting to your Hammerlin HQ100 shortwave receiver. As you know, this is a great receiver for shortwave listening. The AM on it is just great. However, if you're a ham radio operator and you want to run this receiver with a transmitter, there's a little challenge awaiting you. What is that? It doesn't have a standby function. It's got a switch on the front, but that's all it does is kill the radio. It has nothing to do with external control of any other devices. Let me show you what's going on. So here's a Hammerland receiving an AM station. So let's say that you're running this receiver with a transmitter. When you go to transmit, you have to mute the receiver or you'll overload the front end and possibly damage it. Okay. So with this receiver, to accomplish that, you have a switch right here. It's receive and send. When you go to send, the receiver is muted. And what that's actually doing is turning off the high voltage in the radio. So all the circuits lose around 300 volts DC. And then when you go back to receive, it reapplies that voltage. On most receivers, when you're toggling your receive and send, there's an external set of contacts on the back of the radio where you can hook into say a TR switch or some other device so when you key your transmitter it does this for you this receiver does not have those rear jacks there is a standby function but it's limited to just the radio so to try to operate a transmitter with this radio would be a real challenge but I do have a solution well there is the rear of that receive and send switch I was just showing you from the front. Schematic wise, there's a representation. You can see that send receive is in line with the power supply. It simply turns off high voltage. Okay, so some guys would simply hook across these two terminals and run some wires out the back of the radio and put that through their TR switch. However, now you're bringing 300 volts outside of your radio switching through your, your contacts and coming back in which exposes you to potential shock hazard okay so what's the solution to keep all the high voltage in the radio yet give you the muting function my K1S switching circuit board this little board will reside underneath the chassis of your receiver you'll simply have an RCA jack on the back panel that you ground and that activates this board. The switching method that I'm using is adopted from the National 300 receiver. So on the National receiver they don't interrupt high voltage they simply raise the ground of your RF game pot and the cathode of the 6AQ5 audio output tube gives you great muting functions and nice and quiet and it does not interrupt the high voltage. So this front selector switch will still operate the way it does. We're not going to get into the high voltage at all. We're simply going to raise grounds and give this radio external muting. All right, so your first step will be to mount your rear jack. Now, I chose to use an RCA jack, but you can use whatever you'd like. So you're going to have to determine where on the back panel you want to install it. On this radio, there was already a hole right here next to the antenna strip. I don't know if that was stock, what its purpose was, but it'll accommodate my RCA jack just fine. So that's where I'm going to put it. After I get that installed, I'll show you other things you need to do underneath the chassis. Well, there's a rear of my RCA jack. The next thing that you need to do is find the location that you would like to place your little K1S module. I glued mine right down here right next to the audio tube so my wire lengths are short going that direction. Alright the next step we're going to come up here onto the rear of the sensitivity pot and we're going to remove the ground off of that pot. This switch is also sharing that ground point so you need to make that connection but we're going to float the ground of the sensitivity pot. Okay, I've rewired the sensitivity control so this switch needed the ground so that's what this brown wire is this is the low side of the sensitivity control which goes down here over to this point 
and lands on the 10K resistor. I'll attach the hookup diagram so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Right now I'm just trying to get things in place. All right. The other thing is you'll notice that my radio has an additional terminal strip here. This is the cathode resistor and cap for the audio output tube. I installed this earlier with some other maintenance I was doing, but I have this loop. That's the ground loop. I'm going to lift that to break the cathode connection to the output tube. And then we're going to route that and the sensitivity over here to the K1 board. So I have one half of the relay contacts hooked up right now on the K1 board. All right, so what that's doing is it's grounding the cathode resistor and the low side of the sensitivity pot. This wire here is ground. This is our switched line and we're across the normally closed contacts of that relay. So when it keys, this one will open, raising the ground on the cathode and also putting 10K resistance in line with the sensitivity control, which will mute the receiver. This half of the switch, we're gonna wire the other way. It will be normally open. The ground is also gonna go here and this line will go to your antenna input jack. So at the same time that this opens, this one will close and short out your antenna terminal coming in to protect the front end from RF. That leaves us with these three wires. The blue wire is going to go up to our new RCA jack. Black wire is ground. I'm probably just going to swing him around and tie it to that ground tab. And then the green wire is film voltage. We just need to steal that off of one of these tubes. All right, so the power's hooked up. Stole the filament supply right off of the 6AQ5 output tube. My ground is over there. Blue wire goes up to the RCA jack, which will key our little module. Now I'm getting ready to hook up the antenna shorting contacts, okay? This is an option. National did not do this, and other receivers also do not short the antenna input on mute. But I think it's a good idea. And when I do it, I like to use this RG174 coax. So I'm going to go across the contacts here. The other side will land across the antenna strip. So when this guy keys, this opens, this will short. Okay, mission complete. The K1 board is installed, wired into the RF gain and the cathode of the audio output tube. Got our coax here that runs up to the rear of the antenna terminal strip so when you key it that will short blue wire going to our external RCA jack and that is what activates the board when it shorts I'm going to fire it up I'll show you the voltage that's sitting on the RCA jack and demonstrate the muting of the HQ100 okay I've got the receiver powered up here is the voltage on the RCA jack which is just under 17 volts so your TR switch will provide a ground, so you're going to connect the center to the shield, and that will activate the mute function. Let me show you how that works. All right, so the receiver's on. We've got a station here on the AM broadcast band. Now I can go to send, and that's the same as it was before, okay? But now, if you have a transmitter hooked up, i got a little jumper wire in here. Okay, I'm just going to short out that RCA jack, here we go, and there it is muted, and there's a receive, mute, receive. So now you can use your Hammerland with a transmitter. So I hope you enjoyed this information presented on adding muting capabilities to the Hammerland HQ100 receiver. If you have one of these receivers or something similar and you'd like to add this functionality, contact me and I'll set you up with a K1 module. They're pretty easy to install and will give your receiver the capability to now be teamed up with a transmitter and operate AM mode. See you again.